Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. We're now in July, hoping things will get better. I finally got a haircut. I haven't received one since October because my hair was getting completely long. It's been growing. Irritating, I know, but what can you do? But thank goodness. And I did finally went out, um, got some movies that I've been saving my money with, even though I had bought some movies at Dollar Tree. But this time I went to Best Buy and Ralph's, trying to get as much titles as possible. Although I wanted to get some more, but half of them have been out of stock. But I'll try to see if I can still save some more for that. Hopefully the prices will go down too, because I know it was pretty difficult. But anyway, um, I'm about to review the movie that I just bought recently, this week. And it's now going to be celebrating its 20th anniversary later on. It's a biopic that's from Disney simply called Remember the Titans. I just got this on Blu-ray. It's a combo pack that has a DVD included. Um, it's a story about a black coach named Herman Boone. It was played by Denzel Washington who um, was about to join in in a town that's been torn apart by friction and mistrust, which is Alexandria, Virginia. He's being assigned as the head coach at T.C. Williams High School, joining in by previous head coach, who just won 15 seasons, who's now becoming the particular assistant, Bill Yost, who was played by Will Patton. It's a very remarkable story based on the true story, no doubt. Even though it may not be as accurate as possible, but that's okay because, you know, usually in these true events movies, they always had to come up with some different stories to make the film even better. I mean, it's not easy doing this, seeing that this is a Disney film. Um, but it's an excellent film. I love this. I remember seeing this in theaters and I had a great time. It really does come together where two coaches are trying to put uh, both black and white students together. They weren't getting along, but you know, once they form together, they'll, be, they'll not only build a friendship and be able to win many seasons as possible including the biggest triumph of, of them all. Yeah. Something they need, they never seen before. And that's what I love about the story. And even for this time, I mean, yes, this was when this whole racial protest that was going around, you know, during the 60s and even early 70s, where everything started to come together. When they finally... Uh, dealt with that. I mean, I, I know nowadays already with this recent um, tragic uh, death of George Floyd that's been killed by police brutality of four men and that's what led to this protest. They were trying to have a peaceful protest but then it led to riots. It was just like the Rodney King uh, beating that happened which led to this riot in 1992. And of course, the whole uh, Black Lives Matter, yeah, which it's true, they do matter. And I know it's nothing new, but it just sucks that this has to happen once again, and they continue with this, even in this COVID-19 situation happening, and that's just, it really sucks. It, it needs to stop. It really does. Um, I'm sorry I had to be off topic on that, but that's what I had to explain of what was happening. Especially with this cancer culture going around too. And, and all. It just it just needs to stop. It really does. They shouldn't take police off the force though because of four guys. I mean, for one thing, they shouldn't have hired guys who, who does a lot of brutality on victims. 
no matter what race they are. They, they shouldn't be doing this at all. They should be serving and protecting them from criminals. If they get rid of them, then there's not going to be anyone left to protect. And then this is going to be another chaos. It will be a nightmare for everyone. And we don't want that. Okay, I know, I'm sorry. Um, now back to Remember the Titans here. Um, it did brought in some stars that it became very familiar, such as uh, Donald Faison from the TV show Scrubs that he went on to do, Hayden Panteri, who later went on to play the, the cheerleader in the TV series Heroes. Um, she was also the daughter in the movie Joe Somebody with um, Tim Allen and Patrick Warburton along with um, Jim Belushi. Yeah, which I enjoyed that comedy. Um, Nicole Ari Parker, I know she's been in other, I think she's been in other stuff too. Um, Ryan Gosling, one of his earlier roles, um, even though she, he was doing some Canadian shows like um, the spinoff to The Love Boat and Young Hercules, which aired on Fox Kids. Uh, but most of all, he he started out as a cast member in the, the new Mickey Mouse Club, yeah, which brought in, you guessed it, um, Timberlake, Spears, and Aguilera. And also has um, Curry Russell, too. <laughs> and But of course, um, as years follow, he became one of the best um, looking, one of the best, um, since he is man alive, uh, actors of them all, you know, doing roles in films like Drive, La La Land, Blue Valentine, Blade Runner 2049, and among others, and he's still one of the top notch actors to this day. And uh, we also had. Um, Kate Bosworth, um, before she went on to do films like um, Beyond the Sea, uh, she was also in Blue Crush, and of course she played Lois Lane in Superman Returns, among others. Um, which, in my opinion, it, it could have been for Amy Adams instead, but hey, let's go. Um, um, but they also had other stars. I mean, they even started joining in some real-life athletes to join in. They had other actors like um, uh, Wood Harris, who went on to do the TV show The Wire. Um, Ryan the Hurst, um, who actually went on to do Be Taken, um, which is uh, the Steven Spielberg uh, series, uh, not to be confused with the movie with uh, Liam Neeson. But he also went on to do uh, We Were Soldiers, the Mel Gibson film, and also the TV show Sons of Anarchy, yeah, among others. So. Uh, so yeah, you, you got a great cast right there in, in this particular true story here. That's produced by Jerry Bookheimer, a you know, longtime producer for films like Top Gun, Bad Boys, um, Days of Thunder, um, among others. <laughs> yeah. And director uh, Bose Yakin, you know, who gave us uh, Fresh. And he also did A Price of Ru Above Rubies, you know, with Renee Zellweger, and, and he also wrote the, the screenplay for a film called The Rookie, uh, the one with Clint Eastwood and Charlie Sheen. And yeah, he also did uh, Now You See Me. But still, I mean, he's a very talented uh, writer and director and producer. But yeah, he also produced the uh, Hostel films, which I didn't care for. But anyway, um, plus it was a surprisingly big hit uh, when it came out. Um, for its pretty million budget, um, it actually earned um, 11 5.6 million dollars, so, and 
13, uh, for, and 136.7 million worldwide. So this was a big surprise for everyone because they had to take the risk to actually uh, be released by a major studio, since none other studios can pick this up but Disney. And Disney at the time was just um, going for something fresh and trying to take the risks as they could and it worked and also because this was the start of um, all these sports dramas that they were putting out that are all, all based on true events like Miracle with Kurt Russell um, The Rookie with Dennis Quaid they also had films like Glory Road with Josh Lucas and Million Dollar Arm uh, among others that we have so Disney was really going for something very special that we never seen before. And it's also considered to be one of the best football films to date, no doubt. And rightly so. So anyway, let's begin with the review. It stars Denzel Washington. We have two-time Academy Award winner with films like Glory, uh, Philadelphia, Training Day, uh, the Equalizer films, uh, among others that he's done in his career. And plus, you know, he was best known for the TV series Seen Elsewhere. Will Patton, who's been in films uh, like uh, No Way Out with Kevin Costner, along with The Postman, also with him. Um, among many films he's done. Uh, Wood Harris, Ryan Hurst, Donald Faison, Craig uh, Kurtwood, Ethan Supley, Ryan Gosling, Burgess Jenkins, Kip Pardue, Aiden Panteri, Nicole Ari Parker, Kate Bosworth, uh, Neil Gaunt, and Earl C. Potier. It's written by Gregory Allen Howard. And it's directed by Bose Yakin. The movie begins in Alexandria, Virginia on July 1971 at the racially integrated T.C. Williams High School. We meet a black coach named Herman Boos, played by Denzel Washington, who was hired to coach the football team, joined by their previous uh, white head coach, Bill Yost who's played by Will Patton, had been nominated for the Virginia High School Hall of Fame, and having to win 15 games in a row by his team. Um, apparently he was afraid that he was going to be replaced um, by Boone. And Boone, on the other hand, thought this wasn't a good idea to do so. So as several um, conflicts that were going around and some discussion because they're afraid that they might boycott it and they're afraid that you know the rest of the team are not going to join yet alone the entire town by making this conversation that Boone decided to um, join in you know he's actually a tough opinionated no doubt and he's going to do the best he can and Joe suddenly joins in to become the assistant, so hopefully things will work out for both um, high schools to have uh, black students join in with the whites. And that's what led to uh, that one particular day at the gymnasium where, of course, you meet um, all the black students, um, including the... Donald Faison as Petey Jones, yeah, who's um, the right back uh, linebacker, which at this point on he was smiling and <laughs> and Boone just came over to him saying, you're smiling, why are you smiling? You think football is fun? And, and then he was all nervous and <laughs> he was stuttering, he was like saying, you know, if it's fun or not, and now he's like saying, now Boone just says, 
Not anymore now, now is it? And then he says, no, uh, zero fun, sir. <laughs> Alright, so, that's where Boone just uh, steps in, you know, making his conversation with the students before uh, Bill Yost and the rest of the assistant coaches and all, all the other people joined by. I mean, Boone actually has um, joined in with um, Frankie, uh, played by Neil Gaunt, to help out. So now they'll be able to join together by supporting some football training at Gettysburg College as they continue to go on. But unfortunately everyone was afraid, even the families alone. But hoping that they'll cheer on with this particular um, motivated speech that Boom makes or any other and try to help them out, you know, try to to fix everything that's that could be solved and that way, you know, things will go for the better and the greater good. Yeah, so and as as it turned out though, I mean things were not going so well at first. All the students they, they sport out some racism and stuff. They they again had problems and that led to brutal fights happening. I mean that that includes uh, the two main students, Jerry uh, Berlier, who's played by Ryan Hurst, and Julius Campbell, who's played by Wood Harris. I mean Jerry is the linebacker, and Julius is uh, the defense. So now they have to continue um, practicing all the the best moves that any of these uh, players should do um, you know going for those particular special plays everything so everything so now they'll be able to remember from time to time before they end up going back so that way they'll start the new season um, along with um, having to uh, make um, a lot of conversations um, between the students because they have to split apart you know we also have uh, other um, students to join in even even in the cafeteria scene I mean you definitely meet an overweight um, achiever named Louis Lastic who's played by Ethan Supli uh, I love that moment too when he was like <laughs> almost playing like a boom was a drill sergeant and and he was in the army and all, and he was like <laughs> trying to explain about, you know, there's one player with, with white underwear, bikini style, sir, and all. <laughs> and and I, I thought that was pretty funny, too. I mean, he's, he's very lovable. He's, he, he pretty much lacked confidence and skills, but at least he's trying to do what's best. And he's also making friends with uh, Petey. And things are going so well as it seems, even though they're having trouble, struggling, to build this friendship. And and all the, the training skills and everything that's happening. Also, um, just to note too, um, Bill Yost actually has a daughter. Very sweet, um, very uh, tomboyish, very tough. Named Cheryl Yost, uh, played by Hayden Pinteri. I mean, he basically learned all of the steps coming from her father, um, because at this point on, I mean, she'll probably end up growing up to becoming a female coach uh, for football, and or any other. And I could definitely see that too. <laughs> Boone actually has a family, uh, has a wife, uh, Carol, played by Nicole Ari Parker, and also has a daughter too. Which at that point on, I mean, they're taking some time to get along to that sort of fame. Like Boone's daughter just loves to play with dolls and you know, trying to um, color her nails and all uh, before she'll be able to get to know uh, Cheryl better. But Cheryl is just trying to teach her about how to do how to you know deal with football and sports and all that. <laughs> that that sort of thing, but she's just not really interested. 
that sort of thing. Okay. Um, with that aside, um, they even join in with um, a student from Northern California because his father is a um, a sheriff, and his name is uh, Sunshine or Ronnie Bass, uh, played by Kip Pardue, and which unfortunately <laughs> uh, Jerry actually calls him a food cake. Yeah, he had long hair, and then and then he took out a football and just threw it at him on his back, and then later on, the <laughs> um, at the uh, the locker room in the showers, I mean, he actually actually kisses uh, Jerry, <laughs> which was led into a fight, <laughs> and all in all, <laughs> okay. When the students. Um, had an early morning run, uh, joining in with Boone and the rest. That's what led to this motivated speech that he was given where they actually had a civil war going around at that particular period, which is you know, Gettysburg. Uh, it was a two-day uh, war that happened. You know, a lot of men were there that they fought, you know, for their freedom and all. I mean, they've been killed, they've been injured, they had, half of them had survived, but they sure remember this moment. And it was very powerful. I love that. And then, when they finally got back, um, uh, Jerry's uh, girlfriend, um, Emma, played by Kate Bosworth, uh, came. Fortunately, though, um, she wasn't so sure about um, his new best friend, Julius, so it had to take some time to figure this out. And even uh, Jerry's um, mother is just having some questions and doubts how this um, friendship's going to turn out. So, I mean, after days, I mean, they finally uh, accept it and get along. Um, Jerry, of course, you know, has a friend, Ray, uh, played by Burgess Jenkins. You know, it was a tackle and all. But then he did kick him out um, during their particular special game. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about was that by the time, you know, they got back, they were getting ready for this special game. And where they're going to go after all these other high school teams, you know, learning all the steps and try to do exactly what they can that they all the coaches have taught them like for example I mean there's one moment when when Yost um, actually tries to hire um, Petey back on the game to to go as linebacker because apparently um, Petey was very struggling so hard when he was uh, listening to Boone because Boone actually kicked him out of the team for a while. I mean, just have him sit for a while, but then hires back. So hoping this could actually uh, fix this situation, and it did. But there was a lot of conflict going around too. I mean, Yo sexy uh, lost um, his whole thing. All of this that was happening. Um, even worse, though. Um, uh, Yosef's friend just couldn't get along with Boone and that's also what led to a brick that's being thrown inside uh, Boone's house. Uh, he had a shotgun and for his protection and then that's where he uh, made a conversation on the news about what, who did this. A lot of racial issues and you know, harsh words, all of that happened. And, of course, at that point on, uh, Yosef's friend suddenly becomes the coach of, of another team. and and Because apparently he did call Boone a monkey. All these insults. Which, this was a funny moment, too, because by the end of it, <laughs> Boone actually gave him a banana. <laughs> I thought that was pretty clever. You know, sort of has revenge here. Um... Also, there was a, a nice moment, too, with um, 
with the entire team going together. Uh, they even chanted the the Titans theme. You know, we are the Titans. And that one coach was like saying, who they are, the Beatles? And, you know, they so far so good. You know, they're getting better and better as they turn out. I mean, even if they had trouble. But they're already winning victories, you know. The entire town is cheering. I mean, they're even cheering for Boone because, you know, he's helping them out. You know, trying to make things a lot better now than, than they were then. So they even had other, uh, not only the whites to join in, but also the blacks. All the neighbors the whole town they were cheering for victory for this entire game and you know and, and I know even Julius was afraid too because he was afraid that that the police officer who's white uh, might attack him or so or any other or he, even all the other neighbors in that one scene but no they were actually um, cheering for him they they really were very surprised and I, I love that I love these moments and then when Jerry uh, was invited to bring Julius to his house, uh, he trying to greet with his mom, and you know he she was a little worried, but shook enough. You know, at this point on, things are gonna get even better. And as it turned out, everything was better. You know, and they're I know they're they're still having some more conflicts, having to go to this local restaurant, which is being run by whites including the owner of the place. Uh, if you watch the, the deleted scene on the Blu-ray and DVD, and I wish they didn't cut that scene, but if you watch this moment, was when um, Sunshine joined in with his friends. They wanted to like celebrate, you know, just go around, you know, have a good meal. Um, that's when he joins in uh, with his father, Telling them that they have the right to be here, and that alone just really works. And I, I wish they left that scene in, because it really shows how they really care, and they they should be able to have the respect they need. And soon, um, the the entire half of the half of the people who were sitting there had left, so now they get to sit exactly as they want and all the foods are there maybe left out from them it's just cool uh, there's even another moment in the deleted scenes with um, where uh, Yos um, and Cheryl um, came into uh, a black church and you know they were actually greeting to each other and getting just uh, be able to have a very powerful um, speech and all and even this uh, beautiful moment too when they're like singing the choir I mean it's just this is exactly what we need these days to, to get along for between two races um, so as as this, as they've been winning so many games now everything was going great until a car accident occurred for Jerry and he left out paralyzed which was very sad um, everyone was there um, to see if he's gonna recover uh, but Jerry uh, wanted to hire Julius to, to speak with him because he's best friends now and he's almost like his, it's his own brother I mean, of course, the, the nurse is always, you know, acting all so peculiar. I mean. um, because they're now going to be able to win the last game, too, of this particular season. And when they finally um, have Julius to join in, which Emma finally uh, greeted him for good luck. So now they're going to get along. Um, they did everything they can. They, they played by the numbers and... They finally beat all these teams, and they finally won the victory um, trophy and all. So now they'll be remembered to this day. And I'm going to keep it that way because I don't want to spoil the the particular 
twist which is very sad and depressing but at the same time it's it's still a very powerful and remarkable film that I, everyone should definitely enjoy watching even if you're not a big fan of sports that's okay I mean, it's worth it and this movie really holds up together it really does solid performances all around including Denzel Washington I mean he definitely nailed his performance as Herman Boone yeah. which is interesting too because we got to see the real life Herman Boone who just recently passed away uh, last year and it's sad, I know, even having to watch the Blu-ray, I mean, it was very heartfelt. But he was very pleased uh, with Denzel's performance, and and he acts exactly the way he did. Um, also, I saw the real life of Bill Yost. Uh, I don't know if he's still with us, but if not, then that's sad, too. Um, may, may Wester, you know, God rest her souls on both. Um, but Will Patton, of course, um, did an excellent job, too, playing the part. He really nailed this exactly what we wanted. I mean, at first it's almost like you're expecting that he wasn't going to get along with Boone, but apparently he did, and I love that. Um, even though he is struggling this hard to actually win the Hall of Fame because of all the hard work and energy that he had to, had to train for all of his um, football students to win victories and all because he's been doing it for years and Boone actually cares for, for Yost too, he really did, it shows I mean, I mean hard times and then they really went on for their particular hope over the years and, but they still remember that moment that they ever had um, Anyway, but back to the cast, uh, even Sapli, um, I thought he was hilarious as Louis, and I wish there were more screen time with him, though, but nevertheless, it was nice to see him. Um, same goes with Petey, played by Donald Faison, he was great, too. He's also funny. Uh, I also love those other moments, too, when they're even trying to sing the song uh, by Marvin Gaye, you know, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, or or even the Temptations. I mean, I love that moment too. That even Louis is a big fan of those um, great um, R&B soul uh, artists. So it also shows that even whites uh, can love any of this type of music too. And I do too. I mean, I, I do listen to soul sometimes in R&B. Also, um, that one moment too uh, for Louis was that when. <laughs> Uh, when he actually was giving uh, Boone a, a hug, you know, just to get ready, because he was explaining that he actually passed, um, only got a C minus in his test, that he'll be able to be able to go to college, uh, <laughs> and he was just just giving him a hug, and he, and Boone was like saying, "Well, I really appreciate it, but I'm already married." <laughs> so it's almost like you know he was gonna fall in love with him. <laughs> Which is weird, I know, but that was very funny. Uh, Ryan Gosling's character, um, who plays Alan Bosley, uh, he has a moment too. I mean, there was that scene where he was uh, <laughs> just uh, making the conversation with um, with his black students, uh, and he was like, he's always into rock and roll and all that. Uh, that was pretty nice. And <laughs> Um, <laughs> and and then um, there's um, there's a lot of nice um, integrities and honesty and you know, all, but again, they, there's of course, as I mentioned already, brutal fights, a lot of conflicts with with the town. You know, they had a lot of protests going around. You know. Police have, have been arrived to stop this um, situation, everything that was going around. I mean, it, it was hard. But what's, what's more important of them all is that no matter what happens, they're always going to have the, re the respect they 
deserve and and they're always going to remember those times that they had you know, during this particular um, era. Um, they had an amazing soundtrack right there. I mean, it's a mixture of all these songs, um, you know, such as The Temptations, Cat Stevens, Marvin Gaye. Yeah. yeah, they even had the song "The Long Cold Woman in a Back Dress" by the Hollies. I love that song. Uh, they had uh, CCR, you know, Quiddin's Clearwater Re Revival, and Bob Dylan. So all, all these artists. Uh, but they actually had a very uh, memorable and wonderful score uh, by Trevor Rabin. In fact, um, you may have heard this in a lot of sporting events like the Olympics. Uh, they actually had the Titans uh, spirit theme, which that's been so recognized. I mean, you hear this in this entire, well, I think in the end credits as well. Because it's a seven-minute instrumental uh, theme that was so powerful that I'm pretty certain that anybody who heard all that will recognize it from this film alone, and that's cool. Um, as for the Blu-ray that I have, um, the transfer is totally pristine, and looks even better than ever, a lot sharper, and a lot of clarity. I bet this would definitely look even better on 4K Ultra HD too among others because I know the previous DVD that's included on the set uh, was released back in 2001 and it was THX certified and all and it looks really cool and um, also there was a director's cut um, DVD that was released um, a couple years later like in 2006 was they just used half for the deleted scenes uh, from the movie just to intertwine with the storyline and all that they could have added but hey that's cool but I, I can live with it I mean for the theatrical cuts and hey it's cool to have blu-rays where you get to interact to see all the features that they should have added you know? I do wish they added the trailer though but that's okay I mean, but hey, that's what studios always often do. They always omit the trailers. Sometimes they could leave it in, too, for the case of being. They had to do some changes with the story. I mean, for its accuracy. Like, I know it may have had happened maybe in the 60s. And maybe they, they even explain about all the other characters that they had, too. Um... Like, we begin to find out what happens to half of them. I mean, we already know about, you know, some of the characters that might still be with us or may not be anymore. And, and he actually admits all these other um, situations and all this other uh, true stories about those other real-life uh, characters. So I, I know they had to do a lot of changes to try to make it, because they weren't so sure if it did happen or not. But whatever the case, I mean, they they took the risk. They really have. I still think, to me, it's it's one of the best movies ever to achieve. Um, and I definitely agree that it's right up there with all the other best football films, like... Um, the Longest Yard. Um, it can even join in with Any Given Sunday, All the Right Moves, uh, Varsity Blues, among many other football films. Because yeah. it's definitely a triumph, no doubt. And I definitely recommend this film for everyone. So that's the Remember the Titans, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.